So I wanna welcome everybody to the first Campus Live for our upcoming school year. I also wanna especially welcome our new families that are joining us today. So we wanna to touch on some new information to share with you as we count down towards that first day of school. I can remember almost every one of my first days of school. And even though I'm a little older, um, I'm still excited about this school year, even though it's gonna look very different but together I know we're all gonna get through it. So when we send out this information today, when everybody's talking to you, if, if some of it doesn't make sense, like for our new families perhaps, or even our returning families, or if you have any questions, I just wanna make sure you always remember that everyone here at TMI and everyone specifically today that's gonna speak to you, we're here. We're here to answer your questions. We're here to support you as we all transition to um, what will be an unforgettable start of our new school year. So to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to Father Scott so he can open us up in prayer and give us a few thoughts of what's on his mind. Scott? Be on mute. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Thumbs up? Great. Awesome. Great, great to see all your faces. We have um, 102 new families this year. As of today, we still are have several families in the admissions process. So if you're one of those 102 new families on uh, in our community, welcome especially to you. I am Father Scott. I am the head of school and honored to serve in this role. Um, we are looking at an opening day enrollment of 460 at this point um, and possibly climbing. So admissions continues to be strong even as we're in the month of August. So new families, welcome. Before I open us in prayer, I just want to um, share with you a little bit of my heart as we prepare for the beginning of school. Our faculty return on Monday for in-service. Uh, we had a faculty meeting this morning and um, we'll hit the ground running on Monday to prepare for you. But truth be told, our faculty and staff have been preparing all summer. By now you've had time to uh, embrace the reality of our decision to start remotely for the first four weeks of school, beginning on August 20th and coming going through at least September 21st for remote instruction. Um, some of you agree with that decision, some of you don't. Uh, and there are a, vari a variety of diverse thoughts around anything in today's world. Um, I feel like I could say the sky is blue and there would be some pushback from that from some folks because it's a, it's a tough um, climate right now for um, a diverse group of thought. And so when you talk about things like school starting, there's a variety of opinions and all perspectives are welcome. We realize that everything that we're doing is difficult. It's a difficult world right now, and we're trying to simply do the best we can. I'm confident that you could find doctors that disagree with each other, school districts that disagree with each other, news stations that disagree with each other. Um, and what I wanna say about where we are today as we make decisions in a COVID-19 world is that I do not believe that we are in the midst of a political pandemic. I believe we are in the midst of a pandemic that has become political. Um, I wanna give you two examples today in my very day. This is this morning. These aren't made up. These are real life examples today. I received two emails today, two forms of communication today from two different families. One family said, uh, Father Scott, thank you for what you're doing to keep our community safe as we, we start the year. Um, this particular family was telling me that they have lost two family members in the last couple of weeks to COVID-19. Uh, one family member in his 40s um, was, didn't know he was sick, infected, nine feet people in his family, and he and his sister passed away. Um, real life tragedy happening on, um, in two families in our community. About five minutes later, I received an email from another family that said, you know, Father Scott, as soon as November's elections are over, this COVID thing is gonna go away. Um, it's all fake news. So I just wanna recognize that there is such a variety of opinions about COVID-19, about schools' responses to it, about organizations' responses and businesses and city governments and officials. And I wanna recognize the diversity that is the thoughts in this call. All of you on this call have some thoughts about what schools and businesses and the world should be doing as a response to COVID-19. And I want you to know that what TMI is doing is our very best to keep everyone safe, our students, our faculty, our families, our community. We are doing our very best to keep everyone safe. And I am confident, TMI, in our faculty's ability 
to provide robust and phenomenal remote instruction for four weeks. Then we can hopefully be on campus and stay on campus. You likely have seen the news of schools that have already begun on campus instruction. And some of those schools have already begun shutdown procedures because of cases on their campus. We are waiting a little bit longer than other schools so that when we return to campus, we can stay on campus. And I am confident that until we are on campus, our faculty will deliver on our TMI experience in a wonderful and exciting way. So having said that, I wanna open us with prayer and then turn it over to Ms. Carter to emcee the rest of our call. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we recognize that meeting virtually is not our preference. We would rather all be in one space where we can see each other's faces and interact and be the community that you have called TMI to be. But nevertheless, in this time, we will be grateful for the virtual opportunities that we do have. Bless our conversation, Lord, the decisions we make for our families. Regardless of what opinion we have, Lord, help us all know one opinion, which is that you are in charge and that in your hands all will be well. Bless this day in our conversation that all we do would bring glory to your name and raise up student leaders on this campus. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Okay, Ms. Carter, I'm turning it back to you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Scott. So first off today, we have um, our first speaker is going to be Ann Schaefer Salinas. Oh, pause. You know what? I forgot I didn't tell you who I was. Maybe you know who I am. Maybe you don't. But I'm Tracy Carter. I'm the Dean of Community and Wellness. And so there, now you know who I am. Sorry about that. So back to Ann. Ann Schaefer Salinas is our Associate Head of School. And she and her team have been working literally all summer, most weekends, <laughs> to prepare for this upcoming school year. So Anne, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Tracy. I am so excited to finally be talking about school again. And it's great that so many of you are here to listen to us talk about school. It tells me that you are excited to get back to something. Our teachers are really looking forward to seeing everyone in a few weeks. You know, summer is always a bit lonely for us teachers when students aren't around. But this summer, it was particularly difficult. We all know that remote instruction is going to pose some challenges, but we are also welcoming the chance to think outside the box and see how we can reimagine learning for all of you. Thank you to all of you who sent in questions. We're going to answer many of them in the next few minutes. But before we dive in, I do want to acknowledge that a number of questions submitted for today we're actually about life on campus once we are able to shift to a hybrid schedule. Because of the constantly changing health information, we're gonna hold off on those questions until we're closer to being back together on campus. That way we can give you the most and up-to-date information. So now I'm gonna to turn to one of the more popular questions that was sent in this week. What about all of our hands-on classes? science, art, IND, robotics. How do we do those in a remote learning environment? Well, I can assure you that our teachers have been thinking about that challenge all summer. So to answer that, I'm letting all of you on this call in on some really exciting upcoming information. We are busily preparing back to school boxes for everyone. And those boxes are going to include materials from the art teachers, from many of the science teachers. Eventually, some IND materials will be included, as well as we've got some robotics materials for those of you who signed up for robotics classes. We've also got some other fun surprises that are gonna be thrown in. So we're gonna be getting that information out very soon. Keep your eye on an upcoming news and notes, because this is one of the ways we can think of to really bridge that learning gap and help school feel more like school for all of you while we're doing this remote learning. So that's the exciting news. That's the big question I'm going to answer. And now I'm going to turn it over to Sherry to take on some of the other questions that came in this past week. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Anne. I guess I'm here to answer the mundane questions since you got the fun ones. But um, just to let you know who I am, I am the upper school dean of students. And along with Troy Eason, who is a middle school dean of students, we um, really handle everything that has to do with student life and day-to-day um, um, -day stuff with students um, on campus or remotely. 
And some of the questions uh, that came up had to do with the synchronous online classes that, that um, all of our students are gonna be starting with. So I wanna address uh, the dress code for that. We all know that uh, there have been a lot of studies that have done that show that the way you dress affect how you act. You know, if you dress well for work, you're more successful at work, that sort of thing. And so to that end, we feel it's necessary for students to wear TMI uniform shirts uh, while they're online in class. So you will wear the TMI polo shirt, or if you want, you can wear a button down white uh, Oxford shirt. And those shirts would be worn Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, because those are the days that we're gonna have regular class. Wednesdays are different. We have uh, Wednesdays are going to be chapel and advisory and other types of meetings, not the regularly scheduled class meetings. So on those days, you can wear spirit wear. And I did have some new families ask me what the heck that means. So uh, spirit wear is basically just TMI t-shirts. Uh, if you have a team shirt or a, a TMI shirt from a special event, something like that, um, then you can wear that. Now, some of the new students maybe haven't had a chance to accumulate a closet full of that kind of um, swag yet. And if that's the case, you can wear just the TMI colors, a white t-shirt or a black or orange t-shirt on Wednesdays. The other thing students need to know is that we do still expect them to adhere to the grooming standards. So guys need to be clean shaven, girls and guys need to be, you know, well groomed, your hair brush, that sort of thing. Uh, you also need to, um, be ready for class. So don't be lying in bed. Don't be in a room with the lights off, right? You need to figure out where your workstation is, where you're going to be doing your classes and be ready to go. Um, it's important that we're able to see your face. So you need to, you know, figure out what the lighting should look like um, in that room. And we really uh, want students to have their video turned on. Um, there may be extenuating circumstances you, you can't use a video for some specific reason. And if that's the case, uh, families, please reach out to, to us so we can have that conversation. But it's really tough to teach and it's tough to engage when we can't see one another. Um, and we, as teachers, if I have a student who is in my class and doesn't have video on, it's hard for me to see, you know, is that student engaged? Is he understanding what's happening? Does she want to ask a question, but I can't see those cues? Um, the students need to see one another. And without the video, students just aren't as involved in what's going on in the class. So we highly encourage um, the video to be on. We require it unless there's some kind of extenuating circumstance with that. Um, we also don't want students wearing hats or hoodies or beanies or, or anything like that. Uh, that's part of our dress code as well. Um, we also, um, Regarding backgrounds, some students and adults like to have backgrounds set for their Zoom calls or, or um, Google Meet calls, and that's fine. Just be sure if you decide to have a, a background, it's appropriate. Um, it doesn't have any kind of political message. It doesn't have any moving graphics or animation. And you need to set it at the beginning of class and leave it. Don't switch it, be flipping from video, from background to background to background. Anything that would be distracting to the class, to the learning is, is what we want to avoid. Um, we do also, somebody asked me about um, headsets and we encourage uh, that you use headsets. It sometimes helps with the audio, but it's not a requirement. So just think about whether that would be a good thing for you based on your laptop um, or, or tablet or whatever. Um, and then lastly, I want to mention that this, this handbook is a living document. We're constantly updating it based on what's happening. So don't be concerned. If you see something in the handbook that, and you think this doesn't make, this policy doesn't make sense if we're going to be going back to school, you know, physically, then just know that we'll be updating it as appropriate. And whenever we do that, you will be notified uh, via email. So if it's a kind of a routine update, it'll probably be in news and notes. If it's something that's either more urgent or more time sensitive, you might get just an email blast. You might get a fun little video from Father Scott. So just keep an eye on your emails, read your news and notes, and that's how you'll get those updates. Um, and then just lastly, new students and new families, you will have gotten an email last week asking for you to send in photographs of yourself. Be sure you do that because we're gonna be using those uh, to get to know you um, at convocation day. So just wanna remind you if you haven't had a chance to do that yet, be sure you send in your pictures. 
And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Troy Eason. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Brown. Uh, I apologize if I can't stop smiling. It's just because it, it really is awesome to see all of you guys. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, um, and it's just, it's just really great. Um, I want to give some clarification to a couple other questions that we've been getting uh, with regard to uniform and attendance and that kind of deal. Um, first thing first, if you do have dentist uniform items, you may wear them this year. Okay, now the key is they have to fit correctly. So if you have pants that fit you last year, but you grew six inches over the summer and you go back to school, you can't wear those. Okay, so absolutely if you have the dentist stuff, wear it this year, but make sure it fits correctly. Uh, the second thing is masks. You know, there's a lot of talk going on about masks. Uh, I know that Land's End actually had them on our school store for a while. Uh, that was a mistake on their end, and I'm working with them right now to uh, ensure that we can get those taken care of. Um, we'll have more guidelines on masks coming up to you soon, and the CEC is also going to be having a store uh, where we'll have appropriate masks for purchase. So uh, be looking for some more information coming soon on that one. Um, the second big one that we've gotten is with regard to attendance and remote learning. So let's say that we're in a remote learning situation um, and either you get sick or uh, your internet goes out or you have an extenuating circumstance, how are we gonna handle that kind of stuff? Um, all we're gonna ask you guys to do is just shoot um, Mrs. Griffin or another administrator an email saying, you know, Johnny was sick today, he wanted to go to school, we couldn't, but um, you know, he's just sick or our internet was out from 8.30 to 12 today, so Johnny wasn't in first, second, and third period. Uh, just let us know, and we'll definitely take care of those absences. Um, the last thing I wanted to remind everybody is, uh, is what Tracy said earlier, is that we are here for you guys. So even after this call, if you guys have questions, just get in touch with us, and we're happy to help you guys out. Um, I'm gonna throw it over to Major Flavor in here in just a second, but I just wanna say to you guys again, how great it is to see you guys. Um, so Major, over to you. Thanks so much, Troy. And hello to everyone. It's good to see everyone's faces. Um, you know, really exciting, uh, you know, coming on to the school year. Um, you know, we've had our company commanders and our staff literally for the last four weeks on Zoom calls with me as they continue to try to find new and exciting ways to keep our cadets engaged. Um, I'm challenging each and every single one of them um, to reach out to our new cadets and our new family members, welcome them appropriately, because again, uh, you know, the core is a hands-on leadership um, training program. And so when we're not around one another, it challenges us now to look at uh, our systems and how we engage one another. And uh, each one of those cadets is working really hard to figure out new ways to, uh, to keep everyone engaged. Um, what I wanted to discuss really quickly is um, the uniform issue and some of the changes that we're making in the core, um, just based on, you know, what's happening in this new COVID world, um, what's going to happen if we go to a hybrid model, and then eventually when we do get back to school. So the first thing I wanted to cover was we did have a plan for, for the new cadets to come onto campus to receive their uniform issues. Um, what I will tell you that is that that plan has been um, delayed as of right now. We are looking at a plan to try to get everybody onto campus for at least a drive-through uniform pickup that will hand out core polos, core t-shirts, and maybe a few other additional items um, that the kids can pick up just to start the school year. Now that was just for new cadets. Um, for the returning cadets, we know that you guys have gotten bigger, especially some of our middle schoolers who have grown up inches upon inches since we've last seen them uh, at the beginning of March. It's hard to believe, but some of the kids and some of the pictures I've been seeing uh, that they've sent to me, I'm just amazed at just how big some of these kids have gotten. So I know that there are going to be some additional clothing requirements from the core side, and we will handle all of those uniform issues once the school's made a decision to come back to school and we're all back together again. But at this time, we just really want to focus on our new cadets. Um, one of the other exciting news for this year, if you've joined in some of our other talks, is that the core is transitioning this year from our um, uniform, camo uniform that we've had for many years called the ACU uniform. And um, I'm gonna ask Steph to see if she can't put up an image um, for you all to see. 
Um, but that new ACU uniform, which we've worn for many, many years here in the Corps, is getting phased out, and we are bringing in the new OCP darker camouflage pattern that really the rest of the Army and really all of the military um, are transitioning to. I'm very excited to announce that right now we have 100% of those clothing items in for our juniors and seniors to start the school year. Um, this was supposed to be a two-year transition plan, but we are very much ahead of schedule and we are already beginning to purchase the items for our sophomores and our uh, freshmen that we know uh, were on campus uh, last year. And so we'll start to get uniform sizes for our new freshmen. And then eventually as the year progresses, start looking at our sixth, seventh and eighth graders. My hopes are that we are completely transitioned out of the ACUs by the end of this year. And hopefully by the start of school next year, we have everybody in the new OCP uniforms. I know the kids are very excited. Everybody loves the new stuff. So um, I know everyone's getting really excited about that. Um, let me just talk real quick uh, and then I'll hand it off um, to Brandon Palomo in athletics. And I've gotten some questions in regards to in the distance learning model, um, what are the core kids supposed to be wearing? And I will tell you right now that I've got no ambition whatsoever to have the kids in full class A's in your living room or at the breakfast table on a Wednesday morning. So we wanna be as flexible and accommodating as possible in the core. And so the direction that I'm giving our student leadership right now is that for all of their online classes, a core polo, a TMI polo purchased from Land's End, or if you're a returning cadet and you have the gray and white polo, you can wear any of those polos for your classes. Again, there is no core requirement for you guys to be running around the house in your camo uniforms or uh, doing combat roles out your back door or anything. Um, we wanna make you guys as comfortable as possible. And so from a core perspective, any polo from TMI is appropriate for wear. Uh, the last bit of news for you is that if you are a new cadet, I just wanted to let you know that you would have typically have gotten in your uniform issue a little tiny orange booklet called a bugle note. And in that bugle note are, is all the information that you would need in order to start your life as a cadet in the Corps. I'm very happy to announce that we've made tremendous strides in rewriting that handbook for this year. And a new digital copy has been uploaded onto the resources page of TMI. All you simply have to do is look for cadet handbook bugle notes and you simply click on it and you'll be able to download the entire thing. The second part is a cadet manual, which is what we use to basically run our core program. That, pro that manual has not been uh, rewritten or redrafted since 2012. And I'm very happy to say that we are in the final process of making the corrections to a new 2020 version of the cadet manual, which will also soon uh, to be uploaded onto our website. So again, very exciting news um, in the core. Things are happening. I can tell you right now, looking in the Zoom meeting, I have a ton of cadet leadership that's attending this meeting right now, and they are out looking at all the new faces, hoping that some of them are in our ranks next year. So until then, Brandon, over to you. Hi, right, thank you, Joe. Uh, welcome everybody. I'm Brandon Palomo. I'm athletic director uh, here at TMI and, and uh, I want to welcome you to, uh, to our Zoom meeting. Um, there are some small changes uh, in the handbook first. Let's, uh, I wanted to address some of the, some of the administrative stuff. Um, some small changes to the, to the athletics handbook. So I encourage you to go through there and read, uh, read that through. And, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. One of the ones I wanted to highlight uh, is a collaborative effort between uh, the academic side and Ms. Schaefer Salinas and Major Claiborne and the Corps uh, and athletics. And that is to revamp our credit policy for athletics uh, to include a wider range of activities that are available to our student body. We want, uh, and, and we felt that we wanted our students to, to pursue their passions and give them a little more freedom to do that, whether that's in the classroom, whether that's on the field or whether that's in the core. And, uh, and we wanted to make it easier for our student body to do that. So what we have done is we have added several um, qualifying activities from the core to count towards your athletic activities uh, and get athletic credit for graduation. We have also reduced the number of credits that you need for, for graduation uh, from 1.5 to 1.0. So that means that with that extra half credit, you'll be able to fill that with uh, any curricular uh, a class that you want to, uh, any elective class that you want to, and, uh, and really go after those things that sing to you. And, and so that's a, that's a very, uh, you know, 
very, very welcomed uh, uh, advancement in our in our in our graduation requirements that we were happy to be able to to collaborate with academics and with the core uh, on and get that available to you. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that. So like I said, feel free, go through the handbook, read that section. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, as our remote uh, instruction affects our, our athletic offerings, uh, our physical education, our upper school classes for lifetime fitness will still meet. Uh, we're gonna offer them over, over Zoom and virtually uh, just like all the other classes. So if you, if you have a lifetime fitness class in your schedule, you will still meet uh, Coach Tony has been uh, has been working all summer on, on a curriculum and uh, and a workout plan and and he's going to deliver that uh, over Zoom virtually so you will have those classes uh, same thing for middle school so seventh period athletics will still happen we've been fortunate enough to be able to have the flexibility to to uh, divide those offerings into the sports so we will have volleyball football cheer cross country pe and soccer as our offerings for the fall and deliver each of those activities virtually uh, tomorrow in news and notes everyone will get a form a google form and that will be filled out by all of our middle school students in choosing which activity they want to participate in once we get all that feedback and uh, and we're ready to start on august 20th you guys will be the your children your middle school children will be divided into those classes and have a private zoom with that coach uh for that activity and so uh we're, we're very excited about that as well um for our upper school athletics uh our start time has been pushed back we were originally slated to start august 3rd uh but of course that's been pushed back to september 8th so right now we are in summer workouts all of our football uh, players, all of our volleyball players, all of our cross country uh, runners and all of our cheer uh, and dance participants, they are going to be uh, working remotely with their coach. So if you are interested in joining one of those activities, please reach out to me. I can get you in contact with the coach and put you on the list. Uh, and that way you can take advantage of those activities. Uh, September 8th, if and when we are able to resume activities on campus, we are going to do that. And, uh, and that will be the first day of our fall sports activities. Um, over the next few weeks, another uh, interesting development, uh, a much welcome development in athletics is uh, we have a new policy where we are going to begin trying to let small groups of, uh, of students uh, on campus for activities. And as that process plays out, that will include practices for our sports. Um, we, have a, we have a process of procedures and protocols that we're going to go through. We're going to develop plans for, for having those, those, those uh, activities on campus. And then we're going to hopefully be able to do that in the next few weeks. So uh, be looking for that as well. Um, I just wanted to be a little bit brief. I know there's a lot more than, than I can cover here. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, let me know. I'd be happy to chat with you and, uh, and either give you more information or uh, just uh, you know, hear your commentary or, or hear your opinions on, uh, on how things are going. Uh, I hope everybody is safe. I hope everybody is, uh, is enjoying their last few days before classes start. Um, and uh, we certainly look forward to the day when all, we can all be together. Uh, I miss everybody. I love everybody, and uh, I'll throw it back over to Tracy. Thanks, Brandon. Just a quick update. I know that Troy mentioned something about the CEC, and so for those parents that might not know, that is our Community Engagement Council. It's a, it started last year, but it's a combination um, of what would have been our uh, booster club and our, our parent group and so that's the CEC so when you hear that at first I was like did he just say the CDC but no never fear it was the CEC our community engagement council and so when you hear that they're going to have some spirit offerings and stuff like that so I just wanted to make sure that I clarified that a little bit for you I know that all of my colleagues feel this way but some of the most important voices that we um, should be hearing are those from our students and so today we've asked just a couple of them to share some of their thoughts and I wanna introduce them to you today. First, we have Claire Rollwitz. There she is, I can see her. Claire Hi. is an upcoming junior. Hi, sweetheart. And Claire, this is a question I'm gonna ask you. Now that you've had some experience with distance learning, what are some of the advantages that you've experienced with that type of school? Yes, I have definitely enjoyed the extra sleep and showing up to class in my slippers. But aside from that, I have enjoyed creating a routine that works for me and finding creative ways to connect with my friends and classmates online. And I've also enjoyed having some extra time to spend with my family and pursue other hobbies. That's 
great. Um, so what are you most looking forward to for this coming school year? I am just super excited to get back to school and get into a routine that will hopefully add some more normalcy to my life. And this year I'm a first sergeant for Alpha Company in the Corps and I'm super excited about that and can't wait to get the Corps family going again. So. Thanks Claire. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over to Anthony Fletcher. I'm looking for Anthony. Oh, there he is. I see him. Oh. Anthony's a, can you hear me okay, Anthony? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Anthony is a senior this coming year, which boggles my mind because I remember when you came to TMI. Um, I don't understand how kids get older, but I never do. I don't know if any of the parents experience this. I don't know. Maybe it's just a me thing. But anyway, Anthony, let me ask you the same question. So going through the distance learning, what are, um, what are some, some of the things that you would take away from that or that's um, advantages that you experienced? I'd say the distance learning is kind of more realistic of college because no one's necessarily forcing you uh, to pay attention. You kind of have to take that responsibility on your own. And it also forces you to work on time management skills. And then for me, another thing that I like, another benefit is it allows me to do things that I enjoy aside from school, whether that be reading a book that I like or catching up on a TV show. It gives me a free time to really explore. Uh, okay, now you have to share what TV show have you gotten caught up on? Have you binged something? Right now I'm watching uh, Power on Hulu, which is that's my favorite show so far. Oh, very cool. And what are you most looking forward to for this upcoming school year? One, getting back to school, obviously. Um, two, uh, I'm really interested in Mr. Redwood's uh, AP Gov class. Uh, it's supposed to be really hard, so in a sense, I'm kind of glad it's distance learning, so I have some extra time to study for him, because it's not necessarily have a, have a reputation for being a, you just kind of like go and chill. But um, I'm looking forward to get back. I'm looking forward to football. Um, and looking forward just to seeing everyone again. Yeah. Well, I can speak from all of us. We're excited to see you again and, and have you back on campus too. Okay, last but certainly not least is Teddy Lopez. I'm trying to find Teddy. Okay, there I see him. Teddy is also a senior. Again, another one of these that I'm like, how can y'all be a senior? So Teddy, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, I can. Great, so you know, I'm gonna pass that same question on to you. When, when you went through distance learning, um, what were some of the advantages that, that you experienced? So there are actually a couple things I really like. One is not having to deal with traffic um, to and from TMI. I know that can get really hectic, especially on 1604. Um, and another thing I love is now that my, uh, now my parents are spending more time at home and my uh, sister just came home from work, um, I get to spend more time cooking breakfast with them and just, you know, bonding closer. Okay, are you a good cook? If I ask someone in your family? I'd like to say I'm a modern Bobby Flay. Oh. Whoa, I think we need to have some throwdowns. Yes, ma'am. I'll sign up. <laughs> so tell me, what is something that you're looking forward to for this coming school year? So my junior year, I had Mr. Friedrich as my biology teacher, and he got me really interested in possibly pursuing the medical field. And I'm taking his biotech and neuroscience class, and I'm super excited to have him again as a teacher. That's awesome. I know I tried to sign up for that class and it was full. I don't know if they won't let, won't let us adults in, but it does. It sounds really interesting. So, and I don't know if it's really full. I was just saying that, but anyway, it does sound like an interesting class to take. So that's awesome. Well, thank you all for giving us your comments and what your experiences were like. Everybody's is different. And I think we can pull positives from um, anything and especially our community. I think we are for the most part, we always find the good in it. So thank you all so much for taking time out of your last few weeks of summer to um, speak to all of us and to our community today. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it over to David Griffin. Maybe some of you have not seen him yet, but I wanted to introduce him. David is our Director of Auxiliary Programs here at TMI. And so what does that mean? He helps to facilitate all programs outside of the classroom. So from our outdoor garden to field trips to helping organize clubs. We're super excited to have David be part of our TMI community. So David, take it away. 
Thank you, Tracy. And it's great to see everyone's faces and a lot of names that I recognize. Uh, as Tracy mentioned, I'm also uh, in charge of summer at TMI and I miss seeing a lot of you guys this summer, but thanks for the folks who participated in all the virtual things we could put on. Uh, today, I'm going to speak about just two items. Uh, one, just to give you a sneak peek of what convocation is gonna look like. And so some new, new folks may, uh, and maybe some people that have been around a while, may, may not know what convocation is. And so <clears throat> our opening convocation is really the first day of school. Uh, and it's gonna be Thursday, um, August 20th. Um, convocation itself is, uh, is something that's very special to TMI and we usually do it in the chapel and we usually have a big handshaking line and doing, doing a lot of kind of uh, celebrating the, the opening of the year. So obviously we're not going to be able to be on campus and do a lot of that, but we are going to do it virtually. Uh, and so it'll be just a half day, uh, your first day. We're going to give you a break and just make it a half day. But um, all are welcome, families and uh, parents are welcome for the convocation part of it. Um, it will be virtual. We'll have some introductions of the theme for this year. We'll have some introductions of faculty and other, other staff members here at TMI. We'll also have uh, maybe a message from our student leadership. So they're going to be kind of telling us a little bit about this year. Uh, maybe hear from the new students or at least an introduction and, and see some new students. So that's going to be convocation itself. Right after convocation on that day, we will um, slide into what's called advisory groups. And advisory groups, if you're new to TMI, is you're going to be put in a, an advisory group. Every student will be in one, and you'll have a, a, a faculty member that will be your advisor. Your advisor will reach out to you about a week before convocation to say hello uh, and, and give you a link to the advisory group meeting. And so you will meet with those that your advisory group. It's, it's usually 10 to 12 students in a group with, with an advisor. And so that's kind of your, your group this year. And um, even this year, it's even more important because you want to have a connection outside the classroom uh, with other students and another faculty member. So this is a time you're going to get to know your, your fellow students in your advisory group. Uh, so that's going to be happening that day. And then right after that, you're going to be going through kind of an abbreviated skip schedule of your school day. So it'll be little 15 minute increments of uh, meeting your, your faculty. Uh, finding out a little bit about the courses you'll be taking. Uh, and so that will all be given to you as well. And again, we're going to wrap up about half day that day. So that's kind of just an intro to the school year. Um, we would lo we're looking forward to that happening and it should be fun. We got some special things planned. Uh, another thing I'm going to touch base and kind of give you a teaser on is clubs. And so if you're new to TMI, uh, you, you know, a club, <laughs> you might not know what that is. And so at TMI, that's uh, a other groups that meet outside of kind of the normal school time, or they might meet during school time, but it's also, it's, it's special interest groups, things that you're interested in. In the past, we've had culinary science club, a gaming clubs, a gardening club, but we also have some called National Honor Society, the Model UN, um, na uh, Spanish Honor Society. So a lot of these things for older students, especially are things that you can start getting involved with that look pretty good on a, on a, on a college resume, but, but even more than that, we want you to get involved. And so this is a way for you as a TMI student to get involved in other activities besides uh, athletics and the school curriculum. So this year, even more than, than others, it's an important thing to do. Some of those meetings are going to be happening virtually. As some of my predecessors mentioned, we're working on ways that some small groups can meet on campus and, and do that. Um, so uh, that information will be coming out in news and notes, as well as how to start a club. Some of your older, uh, older students, you might have ideas for a club. So get with a, a faculty member and y'all put in an application for a club that you've been wanting to do or you've heard about. So uh, that's all I got. And I look forward to seeing you all virtually and in person and, and all the different ways we see each other. So back to you, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, David. David was mentioning some of those clubs and it brought back my memory of the baking club that um, Sherry Lim, one of our science teachers does. And every so often the baking club would hold a really a old fashioned bake sale and we would get to buy stuff at lunch. And oh my gosh, it was all so delicious. That's, that's another thing I miss about us not being all together, but soon we will be. Well, everybody, this wraps up our first edition as we head back to School of Campus Live. Thanks to everyone who presented today, especially our students. 
Um, but most often, really just thank you for taking time out of the middle of your day to be with us. And just know that we want to all be back on campus. You hear that from all of us, but we really want to be all together again, back on campus, as soon as we believe that it's safe enough to do so. Many of you have heard me say this um, an awful lot, but for those of you who haven't, I'm going to say it again. TMI is a community. Together, we are stronger. So stay safe, and I can't wait to see you again soon. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.